morning uh, to both of you, Minda and Vinayak, and uh, a warm welcome and lots of thanks for joining for today's session. Uh, just a brief background about Epac News Network. Uh, we are one year old plus company, and it was founded by three uh, the three founders who had very strong presence in uh, government, healthcare, and education, and they have been covering this in the Indian uh, media for more than three decades now. Uh, so they formed the company and uh, our traditional strength has been in government, healthcare and education. And now we are looking to uh, go beyond that to enterprise IT uh, as well as BFSI. So primarily uh, what we'd like to focus uh, today is on three areas. One, uh, maybe uh, the best would be if you can start with a brief about the genesis of Touch and uh, how it came about. Uh, also, talk about the solutions and services offerings around artificial intelligence that you are providing, uh, and what sort of use cases uh, you already have been witnessing. Uh, then, a uh, little bit uh, talking about what you have been doing with the broadcast at the Olympics. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, maybe a little bit on the perspective of the commercial usage of artificial intelligence use cases in the Indian context. So these are broadly the uh, three areas that we are looking at. And uh, maybe, uh, maybe if you can give a perspective on uh, one is uh, having commercial use cases uh, in of AI and how uh, successfully you are able to monetize those uh, and what sort of business models are built around that. So maybe we can start with the genesis and a brief uh, story on the evolution and then we can take it forward. Sure. Rajiv, thank you so much. Uh, I'll quickly just take that one up. So, uh, you know, the core ethos of the company has always been that uh, we want to become the epicenter of the metadata for the content. Right. When we say creating metadata or video content, what it means is to be able to identify information that is unseen to human eye or when we consume content, which is very, very essential when you're doing media processes at the back end, like identification of objects, location, emotion, scenes, characters, uh, you know, camera angle changes, aspect ratio. There's a bunch of things that keeps happening inside the video content, right? Uh, these metadata form a very integral part of the media processes today right from discovery of content to video editing uh even the nsfw the censorship standards that run heavily depend on the metadata identification uh we realized this early on that metadata is going to play a very critical part in defining a lot of the media processes uh in future so what we did is basically we took one of the simplest use cases out there which is identification of metadata that can allow you to create key moments and highlights out of any feed that be a live or a record. Uh, and when we say creating key moments, what it means is identifying important aspects in an event. If, now, if you're watching cricket, uh, Dhoni is batting and suddenly he's hit two sixes back to back. And that's an interesting event, right? Because now people want to consume that content. A traditional way of consuming that content was broadcasters showing it to you as a replay into your event feed. Now, because you're actually in control of a lot of content that you want to watch today, you also want to be in control of what you're being shown today. So now, with the growing need of users, we realize that there's a gap in terms of what the content is being consumed for and what the users need as well, right? And we said that majorly for the live events, there's an imminent use case where key moments and highlights can be instantly created using machine learning and computer vision and can define uh, various important moments inside any live event that can be instantly tagged and can be viewed by users. And platforms can greatly benefit from it because now they beat privacy, they beat engagement, uh, the usual engagement uh, is kind of beaten because now you have more concurrent users on the recorded and the entire key moment files as well. Uh, and more capsules for monetization. So you basically have more assets that you've created uh, within the organization that you can monetize. So that's the core focus of the company where we are kind of very heavily invested in today. Okay, so uh, I'd uh, like a couple of clarification. Uh, be it uh, the context can be live or recorded, uh, but uh, in many of these uh, contexts, the uh, sort of uh, information, visual information that you want to capture 
you need it real time and uh, those real time uh, would require uh, there will be a certain uh, bandwidth or a lag time issue uh, and uh, those challenges will be there so how is the technology equipped to sort of handle uh, that challenge uh, since uh, these are going to be real time and second you a little bit talked about the monetization of the assets my question is uh, this can be a potentially uh, gold mine for advertisers uh, in terms of since uh, this will capture i presume some emotion visual emotions and other things uh, and from that uh, they can uh, the advertisers can leverage that uh, so is that emerging as a use case trend uh, so so let me let me take that and I, I, I think I'll let Vinayak answer the question on how the real-time lag is um, answered with technology and it's actually faster with technology than it is with manual and I'll, I'll, then I'll talk to you about the monetization and how marketing and advertising companies are using it for monetization. So uh, on the tech piece, right, uh, we're in an age where internet uh, speeds have been absolutely brilliant for uh, capturing feeds at high bandwidth also. Uh, today, a process that is run by media companies, a manual process, is a time-taking process where you need to edit the video, take it off the shelf, uh, put it on your editing studio, create like filters, add multiple layers to it, whatever you need to do it to jazz it up, right, before you publish content and then ingest back into the CMS so that it can be transcoded and then can be published. So it's a time-taking process. We have cut the entire process, which usually would take roughly around an hour maybe a minute right less than a minute also how we have done that today is any broadcaster any ott platform out there or anyone who has access to the live content can run it in real time with our platform we allow them to ingest direct satellite feeds we allow them to ingest transported feed we allow them to kind of even use our backend rtmb to broadcast into us right so we have built-in functionalities where we can pull in feeds directly from all these live matches that are ongoing when this is happening obviously in real time when we say real time it does not mean that the replay by the time is over there, uh, there will be a file created. It will have a latency lag of probably a few seconds. And when we say few seconds, it's sub five seconds right now. Within five seconds, your file is actually ready and created for the consumers to kind of consume it because it's that fast, right? Because the minute an annotation happens, it identifies what's happened inside an event. If it's a six, you all, by the time the event is actually over from the feed that you're receiving, it will take you a couple of seconds to just create a video file out of it and just publish it to the user. So that's how fast it can be today in terms of the technology. Uh, so it is next to real time when the utilization happens for these key moment files today. Because by the time the next ball is pulled, you already have the previous ball file ready with you. So it's happening literally at that speed and intensity. Right. And when it comes to monetization, uh, let me just paint a scenario for you, right? So, for example, what happens is because there are so many different viewers with different preferences, some want to watch one player versus another player. And, and there's no one who can create that volume of digital content to fulfill everyone's demands and the personalization needs. So what the AI does is create those moments and, and they can be on demand on, almost can be on demand. So if I want to watch a Virat Kodi 6, I have that choice to watch it now because the AI can actually create it in real time. The other thing is when, when you talk about different platforms, right? You have, you have Facebook, you have YouTube, you have uh, Instagram. Everyone has a different format. They have different requirements in terms of the time limit they have to monetize that content. Now, if you had to do it mon mon manually, you can imagine there's about, you know, for every um, match, you'd have to create thousands and thousands of clips to meet every demand, which is not possible manually. And it's not possible at the speed at which AI can provide. So that's how we can uh, give you the digital content that is required to maximize your monetization. Now, how you use it, you use it on your digital platforms or you, you publish it on the various social media platforms to be able to advertise and monetize it. Uh, and the advertisers can then use these clips to, uh, to, to further monetize their uh, products. Uh, it's it's all happening and it's happening in real time and that's how ai is changing the way people can consume and the the way the content providers can now fulfill the needs of their customer okay uh, i have clarifications on both the points i need one uh, 
first uh, on the the technical uh, front uh, is there a provision since uh, see some of these visual uh, one once you are seeing uh, say you give an example of collating a six or uh, something like that uh, so uh, is there a form where a template is created uh, so certain events which uh, occur again and again uh, so that uh, sort of uh, that template uh, can be uh, reused in certain cases uh, so that will cut down on that lag time a uh, is that technically feasible uh, that is one part of it uh, and on the other question uh, is uh, you talked about mentioned about uh, different platforms uh, that can be individual customized platforms as well as uh, multiple social media platforms. So uh, is the output uh, platform agnostic uh, and it can work across since you will be gathering uh, this very disparate kind of data will be generated and they will be in disparate formats also. Uh, so how can you ensure that they will work across any platform? So today, uh, you know, uh, the file playing across any platform is not a challenge. You know, uh, technical feasibilities for us do exist. And it's existing well enough where we're able to kind of do this across various channels. Uh, so we don't run into those problems typically today. Uh, and integrations with other platforms today is fairly easy. We are, when we create these files, we create multiple formats out of it, right? Various social platforms have various uh, requirements in terms of the specifications, the file sizes, the file types. Uh, at the back end, we create all of these different type of file sizes and file specifications in real time. So we don't come across those uh, challenges because we have kind of pre-trained our modules to understand what is important in terms of releasing what kind of content for which platform. So Facebook would typically require a different format than what probably an Instagram would require. And we are well equipped today to kind of cover those scenarios very specifically. Nina, you want to add on something more to it? Uh, no, I think I want to answer your first question, which was the different... Um you know, the, like uh, making it a process where you've identified. So so what we've done is in our technology, we, we provide you to different slates. So every time there is a six, that slate can say six and uh, the, the clip is added to that, that a logo is added to it. If you want to add some, um, some um, promotional information for somebody who's sponsoring all your sixes, you can add that and it can get published. So all that can be automated and it can be pre-fed into the system. So again, it, uh, there is no latency because of that. Uh, now, uh, coming uh, to the uh, business model. Uh, so I presume you will be working with broadcasters and OTT platforms and the likes. Uh, and maybe even advertisers in some cases. So uh, how is the business model and uh, what uh, are some of these entities in the ecosystem that you work with? Uh, sure. So the business model is basically license based. Uh, we give you licenses uh, to work with the technology, which then gives the technology in your hands to capture the data and publish it to your liking. So what that technology provides you, the process is in the sense that you can automate it as much as you want and you can make the process manual as much as you want, simply because we've heard from our consumers that they want to control some of it, you know, because the game is not just about the play, but also the emotions involved in the play. And that's why our technology is also created to, to detect those emotions and publish some, you know, heartbeat moments, like uh, uh, when, when there's an extra noise in the audience or something extraordinary happens, our technology does identify that and publish that. But if still somebody wants a little bit of manual intervention, that is possible right the other thing who we work with is i think we work with every big broadcaster in india today and 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 and, and now we're reaching out globally so we're starting to work with large global broadcasters in media house is it possible uh, uh, to basically uh, say uh, there are uh, two broadcasts two separate broadcasts or uh, multiple uh, broadcasts and uh, basically merge or integrate and uh, say I want to create certain packages out of it which basically wants to integrate different visual elements from separate broadcasts 
and then come out with a completely separate integrated package, uh, which is uh, I'm generating uh, my own uh, soft content out of it. Is that possible? See, we give you the content, then what you do with it is up to you, right? You can take different feeds, you can use our dashboard to take different feeds, pick out the moments because our technology is really able to identify those moments from each one of those broadcasts. You can take the different moments from different broadcasts and mix and match it to your liking. You can add your graphics, you can add your, you know, your nuances that you want to add. add. If you watch the match and you want to add a certain moment that everybody else has missed, you're free to do that. And that technology provides you that flexibility. Now, um, if we look forward, so what are the uh, aspects or features uh, that you are looking at incorporating further and uh, what sort of use cases uh, those features would be providing? You know, you want to take that? So we're going beyond just, you know, uh, taking in live feed. We are also very heavily uh, invested in working towards uh, pulling in a lot of recorded content, right? Uh, which is your GCs and TV shows and your movies. Uh, so the intent is to kind of make it a, a one-stop video editing smart solution uh, for any kind of content. That's basically where we're intending to. So the roadmap currently for us is uh, how this can be used at a scale where everyone who has access to content, their own content, can probably use the platform to create moments, right? So take off the entire video editing cost and time that you would spend to do something like and bring that cost and time down by one tenth in each segment. That's basically where we're kind of getting towards. Uh, but again, uh, this, what you are talking about, brings to the uh, earlier part that we discussed. Uh, once you are looking at every sort of broadcast, uh, even now, uh, they will be from disparate sources and uh, their nature would be different. So uh, how uh, would that integration work when the source of the video itself uh, is from a different uh, kind of uh, very disparate kind of platform. So how uh, easy or challenging is it to sort of integrate and work on that? Uh I don't think I get your question because mostly when we work with broadcasters, they give us the feed, which is a complete feed, right? So it's it's a complete feed that goes on their broadcast channels or their digital content channels. So what we can do is take the long form content and create short form content out of that. If you want to get different feeds from different sources, that's absolutely possible on our platform as well, on our dashboard as well. Okay, and uh, in terms of, uh, in some cases, since, uh, going ahead uh, you mentioned uh, you'll be looking at even broadcast with beyond live sports shows also uh, so will uh, even in the visual medium uh, these sources might come uh, have different languages so will that language uh, part uh, from multiple language uh, be uh, posing a technical challenge no for as of now, we can work with every language. So we've not had that problem, that issue as of now. And, and I don't foresee that happening. And as the technology evolves, it keeps learning new languages. So that's not a, a challenge for us. And uh, another question is, as um, when I mentioned about the new features and uh, the new uh, models, so uh, what would be the new uh, revenue streams that you are looking at generating and what sort of uh, new ways of commercializing uh, with new entities you would be looking at so apart from our regular license we are also trying to kind of get entire uh, api based pricing right where we are kind of saying that uh, users can use it based on paper usage kind of a model right so you can pay us for the license card, you might be able to pay us for only the amount of usage that you're doing. So we're exploring different kind of pricing for geographies. We're exploring, uh, you know, community-based pricing. We're exploring usage-based pricing. And obviously, we're going to continue kind of expanding on our regular pricing, uh, which is based on the license right now. Is there a possibility uh, of um, 
in some cases, uh, I see that video editing that you mentioned uh, can be used in a customer service uh, kind of context where a visual uh, element. So are there possible uh, usage uh, of those uh, cases in a customer service kind of environment uh, using uh, some of these uh, visual broadcast? Uh, I, I think I'd have to understand more what you mean by that. No, what I was meaning is uh, in certain customer service format where a potential uh, organization is looking at a visual element. And okay. uh, since a uh, different format of video editing you are mentioning, so uh, is there a possibility? And uh, you are obviously feeding uh, something, feeding uh, certain information and using AI. So is there a possibility of looking at customer service as a uh, one more use case? So anyone who creates short form content out of long form content in volumes and wants to have it in different formats, we are the perfect platform for that, right? So it, the use case can be anybody who requires that information, whether it's customer service or insurance companies or, um, you know, um, anyone who's creating that content. It could be like, like Vinayak said, now with the API base, even individual content creators can use this format. Uh, to create key moments and generate highlights because they're publishing content. There's so many gamers out there who publish a lot of highlights, right? They can also use this format. So the, the, the end user, it's end user agnostic. Anybody who needs that can, can use it. But our focus for now has been broadcast companies. And I think we're going to increase our uh, focus as we move forward. Uh, so, um, the, um, another part of which I'd like to know, how is this area in the Indian context? Uh, in terms of, uh, since till now you have been focusing primarily on the Indian broadcasters. So how big is the market and uh, what are the growing areas in the market uh, that you are looking at and accordingly you are planning your expansion? But India is one of the fastest growing economies, right? And and uh, if you look at the number of OTT platforms that are coming in today, it's been it's been unprecedented. We've got 500 plus OTT platforms that are uh, coming in. So all that's a huge potential opportunity for us. Uh, then there are increasing number of uh, digital content creators. There are apps and sites that are coming up. There are betting sites that are coming up. Um, all of those are our potential customers. Uh, in India. And we see India as well as a global expansion as a huge opportunity for us because I think we've only scratched the surface out of now. Uh, another thing, since you are looking at expansion now beyond the Indian geographies and uh, broadcasting uh, compliances, uh, conformances of the regulations across multiple geographies would be different. And uh, once you are uh, going beyond the geographies, you will obviously be uh, cross breeding uh, content uh, which are generated in uh, separate geographies which have separate regulatory compliances. So how is that a challenge and how do you look at it? So Rajesh, that incidentally, that's not a challenge for us, right? Because the broadcasters own the rights and they have, we are the technology. So if they have the rights, they are the ones who use our technology to publish that content. If the rights and the liabilities lie with them. So we do not have to comply with any regulations. That's the good part about it. Uh, a little bit about uh, the, as an organization, uh, what sort of infrastructure in terms of people, uh, resources, and other, you actually can uh, just uh, highlight a bit about that. I'll let Vinayak take this one. Nisha, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Could you please repeat that? Yeah, uh, what I was talking about is uh, in terms of the infrastructure, uh, resources, uh, if you can reward the organization one, What's the current status and uh, what sort of plans you have for expansion? Sure, we are, today are a 62 people strong team, right? Uh, out of which uh, more than 38 people currently are on the engineering side. Um, and uh, we have now built a team of roughly around seven odd people on the sales uh, side and aggressively growing our entire tech ops and sales efforts as well. 
uh, as an infrastructure, we are currently in hybrid solution, right? We are one of the very few companies in the world that do all our training on the local machines and we do all our interesting via and on the cloud. So we have built that system in a way where we are able to kind of train all our data sets on a local server so that we don't have to use uh, those heavy impacted cloud instances uh, and increase the billing cost because we keep running a backend uh, training solution as well for ourselves. Um, and what the future is basically for us in terms of how our infrastructure is going to grow is that we currently are cloud agnostic. We are also going to make it uh, a lot more independent via usage of APIs so that developers can use our API uh, to ingest directly from a single call point of a, a post. Uh, basically where we are focusing on in the next few years. And uh, you mentioned uh, earlier about, uh, maybe in uh, conclusion, I'd like to ask, if we look at the next 12 to 18 months, maybe, so what are uh, the key initiatives and the key expansion areas uh, which, are, which are on the plan? Maybe you want to take that up? Yeah, so uh, like you mentioned, Rajni, there are two areas, right? One is sales and development. So we are expanding our sales and marketing team for our group, global outreach. So we have the product ready. We've seen that uh, the customers are reacting to it and are loving the product. And I think it's time to go global. And we have already have a, a few global customers, but there's room for expansion. On the other side, our uh, plan is to keep improving the product. We get feedback from the customers. We improve the product in terms of UI, in terms of the usability, in terms of what's new and what, what they require. Um, third is the API. Um, uh, API integration, which means that a larger number of users will be able to use it. We are also moving towards the entertainment and the news. So we want to cover the entire spectrum of broadcast. So once we've you know, uh, got the sports companies, then these are the companies that also do news. They are the also the ones who do the, broad the broadcast for the entertainment channels, and they need somebody to come in and publish the quantity or the volume of content that is required across platforms. And our technology, because we are one of the few uh, globally today that can do it all in-house, we are capable of delivering those results as well. So I think the expansion comes on a lot of fronts right now. And I, th I think we're just stepping into that zone when we see that um, L curve uh, take off. So currently, uh, you mentioned broadcaster. Who are some of the customers, existing customers amongst the broadcasters and OTT players? Rajni, uh, that, that's not an easy purview for discovery for us today, unfortunately, uh, because we work with few of the largest ones which cannot name directly uh, out there. Okay. We are the secret sauce, Rajneesh. They, want, they don't want us to t tell the world who we are. Got it. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, okay. Rajneesh. Really pleasure Thanks. speaking with you. Thank you. Thank you, Rajneesh. See you. Bye. Thank you.